Hi guys, it's Adam Ernest back with another series of coping with Adam. Today we're going to be looking at the best coping skills for you and your family to use whenever you guys get mad at yourself. So take a look at this list up there. Tell me which one you would you you would use to cope with many of your problems. And um, yeah, let me know down, down in the comments which ones you use. And another further ado, let's get right into today's video. We're looking at the best coping strategies for different categories from anger to grief to sadness. Let's move on with sadness. Sadness is a feeling where you feel just lonely sometimes. Your anxiety, which might be up sometimes, and sometimes sadness can over affect your life. It can infect your life to the point where it's you're always sad, and sadness can lead to an unfortunate thing that can sometimes lead to death. Um, I'm not saying it will kill you, but it would make you do that to yourself. It's known as depression. Sadness is, if it's not taken care of soon enough, it's like a disease. It will kill you, okay? Now, it won't always kill you whenever you get the coping skills and strategies you need. Sadness is the feeling that you're left out or you're sad or lonely or you just don't feel like, just don't feel good. You know, you just don't feel right. You're just feeling absolutely terrible. You're feeling sad, left out, lonely again. And the best strategies you could use for that is taking a deep breath another one is talking to someone talking to someone is a is a coping strategy that will get you so many places because talking to a friend that you can trust will always lead to the best 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 and i mean best life and best years because whenever you have the persons to talk to you won't feel so left out or lonely, so therefore you won't really feel as sad. But another thing is counting to 10. Counting to 10, I don't feel like would really work in this situation, but it could for some people. I'm not saying in general it won't work. I'm just saying for some people it might not. And for some other people, it might work. So yeah, and the last one is going for a walk. Going for a walk is an absolutely the best one here because going for a walk, will get your body calmed down. For many people, the first one, you know, talking with someone could be good. Counting to 10 might be good for someone, maybe better. Or this one might actually be the best one. And if you guys saw that this might be the best one for you, then um, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But maybe um, you might need to go for a walk. And walks take out all that stress and anger and sadness and relieve it all. Maybe not forever, but at least just to get you down to the nitty gritty, you know, to back where you were kind of normal and kind of not. Because the only way you would really get rid of sadness is if you talk to a doctor or a therapist of yours or a guidance office person, and that would kind of help. Um, moving on, anger. Anger, we would have, um, you know, counting to ten again. Um taking a deep breath, and another one, just breathe, just breathe in and out, All right, take deep breaths, talk to someone, and use one of the newest coping strategies I'm going to tell you is just play with a fidget, okay, because playing with a fidget can really keep sometimes your anger down, and just mainly focus on something else besides what that person is saying that's making you mad and having these type of coping skills will definitely improve your life at home and at school if your brothers or sisters are aggravating the heck out of you now talking with someone would help a lot counting the 10 would help a lot and much more so just remember that all these coping strategies might work for you and could be the lifesaver for the best life in the future. Moving on with the last one, it's grief. Grief is the feeling that you have whenever you lose a loved one. When you lose a loved one, you go through this process called grief. You'll have sadness. You'll basically sometimes maybe even lose your appetite and just downright just, just be so 
shocked that that loved one is gone. Sometimes it might be a shock feeling because your loved one is dead. It might be unexpected, or it could have been still expected, but so just unbelievable. And coping with those is all the strategies I've told you guys in this video. Um, is using all these coping strategies like talking with someone and much more that can get you guys to the best life with this coping skills okay once you use that for grief grief is more of a a big feeling because it's more of like a big chunk of your heart is missing because that loved one is the person that filled that void in and now as he's gone the void is just digging deeper and deeper into your soul and into your crepit heart not crap, it's alright, but down into your heart so far that it's so hard to ever think that life would ever get better. But using these strategies will open up your mind to a better solution and a better way of managing your coping skills and managing your grief and sadness and anger. So thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys later. Bye.